guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas, beautiful black canvas, full moon coming up from behind these giant mountains, far off forest, few trees, little cabin right on the river. Oh, it's such a fantastic place. I wish I lived there. So you're obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're gonna do it just like this. What we're gonna do is prime the canvas, get it ready to go. I'm gonna use dark sienna, thalo green, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, and that's it. We may throw a little bit of yellow on actually, depending on what it looks like, but we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. So <clears throat> again, I just wanted to give you an insight of what the tutorial is gonna look like for next week and how we, we do it, right? We, I gotta film the thing and then cut it up and chop it up and then you guys are able to see it together, how I like it, you know what I mean? Nice and, and easy. So, we need to get a little bit of our liquid clear out of our jar. And this is all the stuff that gets cut out of the, of the actual video. You don't have to sit and watch me do all the prep and do all the nonsense. You just get to see the video and here we go, right? So we're gonna put our clear across the canvas in different places, right? Pick it up, dump some over here, dump some over there you don't need it to be all in one area, right? If you dump it all up in the top, it's gonna be very hard to spread around. Very, very, very hard to spread around. Let's see, do, 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 right? This is all the boring stuff that nobody wants to watch of how we get ready and prep the canvas and stick the liquid clear on there, which for some reason makes the canvas very sticky, but also slippery at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. It's like a magic material. Just a magic material. Look, with nearly one dip in the, the liquid clear, you can cover the entire canvas because you don't need a whole lot. It's just the smallest bit. Let me drag it all the way from over here, try to bring it down to this bottom bit and cover it in one fell swoop. Just like that. Bam, 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 bam. All right, cover it over. This is where you get your workout. Definitely get a workout doing this. It's real tough. There we go. Bing, bang, boom. Then we're going to check. We're going to see. We're going to wipe it off. We're going to tighten the easel up a little bit. All these things that you don't have to see in the video that we let you see behind the scenes. And then when you go watch the YouTube video on Wednesday, you'll be like, man, he cut out a lot of the beginning and a lot of this and a lot of that. I want to get any dry area of our canvas. Make sure it's nice and slippery. Then we're gonna wipe some of it off. A couple paper towels. Wipe it off, because we don't need all of it, right? We have to put more than we need on just to get it to stretch all the way across, but you don't really need a whole lot. So we wipe it off just like that, right? Not a whole lot of liquid clear or anything to come off of the canvas, but it's something that we don't need. So let's wash our brush off like that. Now we're gonna get started. Okay, let's take our, our blue, or should we do like a, no, we did a crimson sky a couple times over the weekend, so let's do a blue moon this time. So we'll take our blue and literally just put it where we want our color to be, right? So we're gonna dump it in, and you won't be able to see it. It's very dark, stays very dark. That way you're not gonna see really much of anything on the canvas initially. You're like, this guy's not even painting. No, I swear, look, the, <laughs> the brush is blue. There is paint going onto the canvas, even though you might not be able to see it. Now we're gonna go down about that far. Let's switch to our thalo green, go into that green color, and just start dropping a layer of green on underneath here. So we have all blue initially at the top, a little bit of green underneath, and then this becomes our base color. So whatever color we put on top of this, when we paint with our white paint, it's gonna shine through with this green color. It's really neat. Get that whole middle section filled in, then we'll go back to our blue, really dump it on, and get the whole bottom filled in. The last little dregs of it. Bing, bang, boom. Now we're ready to start the video, right? Now that we've covered the canvas sufficiently, we like the colors, we like the amount of paint that's on the canvas, now we can actually start to paint, right? There we go. Remember, blue, green, blue. I'm not sure how well you guys can see it. I know my other camera can see it. It's actually recording. 
Now let's clean off that brush. Now initially, like I said, we're gonna paint mainly with white paint and our fan brush, our old fan brush, Master's Touch, size eight fan brush, all dirty and nasty, right? It's like a drumstick. So we need to initially put out a little bit of Aurora Borealis type, or a little soft cloud, something off in the distance. So we're gonna pull down with our white paint, just like that. Really pull it down, trying to leave all the paint on the palette and not on our brush. Right? We don't need a whole lot of paint on the brush. It's not very thick, nice and small. And then we can literally pick a spot. If we want our moon over here, and we know we need something off there, so we can literally make a mess like this. Right? Painting is not hard. Look at that. Look at that nasty mess we just made. It's all just a poof, right? <laughs> it doesn't really matter what we do because we can take our one inch brush and we can start to mix it and we can change it and turn it into a cloud. Look at that. Kind of pushing harder in some areas where it's really bright so it stretches out. Less in areas where it's not so bright so it stays dark. And then all of a sudden you got this puffy cloud off in the distance. Just very simply and easily, just like that, right? We swipe it off, swipe it over. Swipe it off to the side. Makes it nice and soft, right? Now we're gonna come in with our giant cake pan and we're gonna throw a huge moon way off over here, right? But we're really, really gonna do about the top corner of it, really. So just about from the, the nine o'clock mark to about, I don't know, two o'clock, something like that. Not too much of it. Okay, so we need to get a little bit of white paint. We're gonna come back over here, grab up that white paint. Doesn't matter that it's kind of slightly changing to blue now because we drug it all through that blue. Doesn't very much matter, right? And the stuff underneath doesn't matter at all. We really don't have to worry about that. Because everything is gonna grow down. I'm gonna cover over everything, right? Take our pan, let's see, we'll find a spot for our, our little thing and just just a little bit of it. Maybe like that. That's all we're really gonna need. It's about nine to one o'clock, right? That's all we really need. Now we're gonna take that side and really make it nice and bright. All that white paint that we have on our brush, we're just gonna pull it over, especially on this edge. We want it to be nice and bright. So grab the edge, just like that. Pull it off to the side. Get this nice, cool little bit of moon. A little bit of moon back in there. All right, we're gonna hide the majority of it. So it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be there. Just a little bit, a little corner of it, right? That's all we really need. Never have to paint the whole thing. You're never gonna see the whole bit of moon. It's gotta be back behind some, some bit of a mountain somewhere. Very softly. Just kind of stretching it, letting it blend together. It's very cool. Now, we've got to come in with our giant bit of, of uh, mountain, but first, let's take a little bit of liquid white into that white and blue, just like that. Then we're gonna come in and pop in a few little stars. All right, a little bit of that. A little over here, a little over there. A couple little dots. Maybe some inside the clouds, they kind of, they're so bright that they shine through the cloud. Maybe in the darkest areas. Just pop in a few, you never know what's gonna show. So just pop in a couple, different sized ones. Some small, some big, some together, some not. All over the place, right? I wanna make them look like we're trying to not make squares or whatever we're not trying to do. And then on some of them, you'll eventually get one that's just a little bit oblong shape. So pick that guy out, grab him, and make him a little shooting star way off in the distance. Very easily done, just like that. Okay, now let's make up our mountain. We need to mix up a pile of paint. So we're gonna take some of that green and blue, some of the black, and some of our crimson, right? And mix all that up into this nasty, dark, gross pile of paint. Because all we're really doing is making a shadow. And in order to make the shadow, we need a dark color. Now we can grab our small little fan, I mean it's a giant fan brush, it just doesn't have the long handle anymore. And we'll grab that up, drag it through the paint, getting it nice and thick on both sides, and then we can come in and make our shape. Right, the shape of our giant mountain 
is literally giant. It's like over here, maybe it comes down, maybe it's got another little peak, comes up over that way. And again, this is why we don't have to worry about our moon because we're gonna cover the majority of it. Right? This guy comes down over here, gotta have the back side of it, right? We're gonna end up covering all that stuff in black anyway, so we don't need to worry about it. Maybe it comes down over here, there's another peak, maybe it goes off the side like that. And then we'll just cover up all that stuff. Get rid of all the color behind it. Just mess it all up. And just like that, we have this really cool looking mountain. Maybe we'll bring this guy in a little bit less of a steep like that. It's kind of cool. Or again, we can mix it and do whatever we want. Change the shape just by adding more paint. Just like that. I like that guy over there. Nice and soft. And this is why, again, there's no need to kind of do anything below, because everything below you can always cover. So only worry about the top edge, pull the rest of this guy out, maybe he comes straight down and over, goes over this side, maybe we got the shadowy side over here. All depends on how you pull your brush is what your mountain's gonna look like. And I like to do it randomly. Maybe this guy's here or there, or he come up to over here and then we're down this side, or it's here and then it's that way. You never know which way you're gonna go and that way you never know what your mountain's really gonna look like until you get done. And then once you do, you can see all the little areas that you can shadow or highlight, all these little different peaks, cool little things. This guy, I wanted to peak up a little bit more. See, so we'll just lose more of the moon, which is no big deal. We knew we were gonna lose a lot of it, right? Now all of a sudden our mountain looks a little bit cooler. It's almost like the light of the full moon is lighting up these clouds, which is really cool. Okay, let's wash that brush off. A little teeny tiny brush. Let's do the thing here where we're going to try. We're gonna make, we're gonna highlight our one side here, have this side in shadow. So we need to decide a color that we need to highlight with, right? So we're gonna take a little bit of our white, snag up maybe a little bit of our blue, because I don't want it to be super bright white. I wanna save the brightest whites for when we get down closest to us. All right, so we'll take a little bit of that blue, mix it in until it's a, a color that we like. You can always take a little bit more white, and brighten it back up. So. We have this little bit of white and blue mixture, not very super bright white and not very dark blue. And that'll be our, our highlight color, right? Now we're gonna take our low light color, our shadow, which is a little bit darker blue, maybe a little bit of the black and just a lot less white, right? Just a little bit, there we go. A lot less white. Now we'll have like this very dark gray, kind of bluish gray shadowy color. And you can adjust the level with the white until it's not too different and not too much the same, right? Okay, grab our uh, shadows first, because they're easier to do once you've kind of mastered it. Look at that, just drag the knife down in different places. Like, oh, just like that. Again, it, it's gonna look super bright against the blackness of our mountain, but these are the shadows, remember. So don't even cover up all of that super deep, dark bit, right? If we're gonna have maybe a little bit of moonlight on that side, we can come down over here. Let me throw our shadows off that way. Come again, it looks so dark in comparison, but once you put it up here, it looks almost white, like our snow highlights, right? But again, we're doing the shadows. So maybe our mountain comes down, there's a bit, I don't know, maybe down over here, kind of runs through, leads us down in that direction. Then we can highlight in between different areas. We got a little bit down there, it comes over here, it drops straight off. I love it when you, you get to an area and it literally drops straight down. And it's like, oof, what is happening in that spot? Right? Keeping some of those dark areas as we go. Don't want to cover up everything. That is 100% for sure. Right? And you can always go back and, and cover over the parts that you don't like with your highlight color. Right? Say we want to be super bright on this side of the mountain. So it's, oh, look at the difference in that. And all of a sudden you get this really bright area against that slightly darker area and now we have a shadow. Just as, as simply and as easily as that. And then watch this, we come over here straight down, oh man, just like that. Oh, come down like that. It gets lit up by the moon over here. Oh, we have a little bit of snow back in there, kind of leading its way down. All sorts of little things. You have to tell stories with it. It really helps, not even kidding. If you tell stories as you're, as you're kind of pulling your paint, you're like, oh man, the snow is really heavy this time of year and it just really piled up on the side. And just, oh man, look at it. It's just all these deep, dark stones that can't be covered all the way. It, it helps as you're going to know that 
you can sort of tell a little story about it. It's real fun. Look at that, just very lightly scraping down, right? This side, we had all that shadow. Maybe there's a, a light side and a dark side to it. See the differences in there? And then this side comes in, maybe it goes down that way. It starts to fall in. And then we can add some shadows over on this side. And if that's the case, maybe a little bit of this side is a little bit brighter. And all of a sudden you change your mountain shape and what it looks like. And all these little random different things, right? A mountain is a, is a it's, it's just a stacked up pile of rocks. So you can't have all those rocks be all the same. Look, we take a little bit of that straight up dark color that we made our mountain with and really darken up some of these areas where it changes or goes down, right? And get that shadow color back in here, that lighter blue. Maybe it pulls off to this side. You never know. And it's real deep and dark back there. What's going on? Maybe we continue that on. What's happening as we go back there? Look, we're just literally making a mess. Just bouncing the knife, watching it climb down. Look, now as we get down into that phthalo green layer that we put in, it's starting to change color instantly like that. Come back a little bit more of that lighter blue. Maybe we can get a little bit brighter side over here. And continue on with that ridge. As it comes down, lighter, darker, right? Even though we've changed colors, which is really neat. Maybe we'll get a little bit of that darker paint, mix it in a little bit more with that lighter, kind of shadowy blue paint, just so it's the smallest bit different. And then maybe back here, put some of those little low lights back in there, kind of help helping the mountain fade away into nothing, right? And they fall straight down over there, keeping that darkness in there. Maybe there's a tunnel, maybe there's a cave, maybe there's some kind of something that happens up in there and you can climb up. It's like a pilgrimage. You got to get up to the top, All right? We don't want to go down, go down too far though. That's for sure. But I like that. That's very neat how it changes colors like that. Very simply and easily done, right? See if we can't get any more bit of that color to drag down. Little lighter areas, darker areas, really super dark over there. We almost forgot about our one little light peak. Just a little bit of lightness on that peak over there. It goes down just the smallest bit. Now that's all we get. Right, cool little thing. Boom. Of course, it comes down and just cuts right in front of that other mountain back there. And we cover up all of the light. And poof, that's very cool. Very cool little thing. Add some of that deep darkness back into this side because it's so far back there. We really wouldn't be able to see so much, right? Take some of that dark, that black, ooh, throw it back in there. Real super dark, woo. Very hidden, very mysterious over there. What's going on? All right, take some of that dark color again, come back in, and add in cool little shadowy areas in different places as you go, and they'll be very, very dark. Very, very dark, which we like. You gotta have dark if you wanna have light. Got to. And there's a bit over here that not all of it got lit up. Goes down like that. Or it's off to the side. It all depends on how we angle our swipes, right? Get this cool little bit of shadow coming in there so we can come back with our, our bit of light snow and make another ridge. Now there's a shadow down in there. Fantastic, all these little things you can come up with. All right, come back in with that dark, change the angle of our knife to go this way, and just add in a little bit of texture, making those super dark little bits, right? What's happening? What is going on over here, guys? Not that bit, maybe this bit should be a little bit darker because we're in the shadow of it all back there. Ooh, what is going on? A little bit of light, all being very messy though. That's the key, being a little bit of messy back there. It's almost like two eyeballs and some tentacles of this uh, sea monster, whatever we've got going on back here. There we go, really swiping down. And I love how it's starting to change color. Okay, now we're gonna take our brush. We're gonna go from the bottom to the top, not all the way to the top. Look at how it softens it. Look at the difference in the texture, right? No matter which way we swiped, that's the way that we're gonna swipe back up. So we started swiping to the side over here. So we're gonna swipe to the side this way. And we're gonna swipe to the side up there. And maybe up in here, we went straight down. So we'll go straight up in different places, little different things you can see. And if you can make different areas soft, and different areas, very textured. You'll get a cool, cool little piece of mountain, just like that. I like how that bit comes out. 
Okay, maybe come out a little bit further. There we go. All right, and he dumps off or connects into part of that little bit of snow very softly. What's going on? What's happening back there? It's so blurry, we can't even tell. And that's how we like it. Okay, a little bit of our brush gonna come in with, on an angle, just like this, just with the top corners of the brush. Right, tapping in the direction of which we pull so we can come down. And all we're doing is very lightly dragging the smallest bit of that color down a few inches, right? This is adding that another little bit of depth and distance down inside. And adding that air of mystery. What's happening? Where does the mountain continue to grow? Where are the trees gonna come in? All sorts of things, right? Take it, mix it up. Now we have all this phthalo green that's just ready for white and it'll burst into color. So we can come back in without even washing the blue off of that brush, go back into the white, really load it up. All right, then we'll make like these light silhouetted trees. Maybe grab a little bit of blue, a little bit of phthalo green, just mix it down in here. Cause even though we darkened it a lot just then, it's gonna look super bright. You don't wanna go white on white up here. You gotta deaden it a little bit. Okay, maybe we'll do a few or we'll do like a, I don't know, there's a far off tree back here. I'm gonna turn the brush over, I'm gonna pop up. Far away little bits of trees back here. Just popping up like that. Trying to hit the, trying to hit the corner of the brush corner of that side, corner of this side, corner of that side, we just rotate, give ourselves these little bits of branches that pop out, right? I mean, look at how super bright that is compared to the, the rest of the painting. All right, a little bit over here, come back in. Get another little bit of tree that stands out. And this guy stands out down here. Pop him up, just with the corner though. And the more and more you go out, the more you're gonna Give it these cool little bits of branches, different little things. Cool little differences in color, right? Yeah, we're gonna blend that in with all the other trees behind it with it. Coming up into that fog, leaving those dark areas, leaving these little different things. Because an art is the play of light and dark. I always say it, finish the sides for the buyer, of course, gotta finish the edges. And every so often, Pop in a little bit of a tree that separates all these little hash marks and goes, ah, I know what those, I've seen those before. That's a little tree back there. See what I mean? Again, fill it all in. Don't have to see all of it. Now we're gonna take all those guys, flatten them down by pushing up. Again, it just makes it a little bit blurrier. What's happening back there? Look at that. What's happening back in all these trees back here? And again, we're gonna come in with a little bit of fog. We have all this dark. We can't go dark on top of dark. We need to have a little bit of light back there. All right, so we'll bring it down. All we're really doing is just adding a little bit of color and dragging it down. That's it. Just taking a little bit from up here, pulling it down a little bit, pulling it down. Different areas, right? They get different brightnesses, all sorts of things. Take our little bit of fog, kind of decide where does the bottom of our mountain live? Where is it going to be? Where is the bottom of our forest? Does it go down? Could we come in with another angle of a hill? Or is this flat? Is there water back here? What's happening? What's going on in our forest, right? What we needed was a, from our, our light color, a bit of darkness, and then into our light again, right? That bit of dark right back there helps add all that distance, gives it a bunch of depth. And it's just fantastic. It's like mysterious. What lives back underneath there? That's what I want to know. And then you can come in with a little roll of darker trees or anything else, really. We could decide what the land looks like just by pulling on the brush back there, right? And it goes off that way. Or you can come in from another way. It really doesn't matter. You can start to build your own scene and change it from what the tutorial looks like. All right, we're gonna come in with a little bit of land, right? So we're gonna come down and then right down here, we're gonna have a little cabin that lives down here, right on the edge of some water. All right, so we'll have the water, pull our water down, just kind of showing you in my mind where we're headed. Okay, so let's do a little bit of mixing again. We need to mix up a little bit more black, a little bit more crimson, a little bit more blue. Mix them all in. Just making this nice dark shadow color, the same shadow color Josh likes to use all the time, right? With these nasty shadows that we prepare our trees with. Okay, let's see. 
Use a different brush over here, okay? New fan brush coming in. Really getting it filled with the paint. Almost the whole pile of paint we just made filled into that fan brush, right? Doesn't have to be real big, but we don't need it to be small either. Now let's come onto the side. We're gonna come straight down, just like that. We're gonna turn and we're gonna pop in a few little shadowy bristles of our branches, right? Just by going side to side, bouncing over. Now all of a sudden we've got this much darker, much closer tree, and he's much bigger, right? We can decide where he wants to live. He could live on this bit of land, pulls out down like that. You never know what's living over here. Okay, another little one over here, a little bit more paint. We'll throw a smaller guy off to the side because I like saving that guy back there. It gives a little bit more depth, right? Just popping up, pop up with the brush, leaving it little textured, little bits. You don't have to see all of that guy back there. Little thing, soft little bit of tree back there. All it is is a shadow. And that shadow hides the last layer that we put back there, giving it what? More depth. That's right, guys. More depthiness. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to come back in. And just to show you, we'll get a smaller brush. Come in, maybe we'll highlight it with the phthalo green and the liquid white. Maybe a little bit of our titanium white, too, just to brighten it up, keep it nice and bright. Now, the liquid white helps it stick onto these trees. All right, so as we push up, it wants to grab on to these little bits of shadows that we left, All right? And the more we push, the more little bits of tree get high lit, but you gotta have that shadowy side in there, right? Even here, we went a little bit too dark. We could literally just mush it until that brightness kind of mixes in and goes away, and then go back over it. Slightly smaller little section of our tree back there. Very simply and easily done when you have the right tools, right? All about giving it a fact that you have all these little boughs and little branches coming out of our tree. And of course we do have one shadowy side. You gotta have a shadowy side to everything. All right, a little bit more liquid white. Come over here and we'll mark this guy with a little bit of trunk. He's got a little bit of trunk going down him, right? And then we just don't cover up all the trunk. And that's the name of the game. Don't cover all the dark. Don't cover all the trunk, right? Now you can see he's got a few little branches. Then you can go back in and adjust. That's why you leave a little area of darkness in between those trees. You can go back in and adjust. Don't want to cover everything, of course. Then they're very far away little bits of trees. So let's pull out a little bit of that snow. We can kind of see where our, our next set of land is going to live. Maybe this whole thing is water back there. It comes around this river. You never can tell, can you? Until we get done. All right, very flat strokes. You want it to be flat. You don't want it to look like it's sitting up on this huge giant hill. At least I don't. Now, why don't we paint, since we got that little extra bit, let's come in and paint ourselves a cool little cabin, right? Maybe the front, gonna sit like this. Maybe like that, I got our little cabin area. All right, we'll come down one and a half lengths on the left, one length on the right. Start to go back, sitting up like that. There we go. Right, we're literally gonna scrape away everything that we don't need from behind it. And that way it'll look like our house is sitting back behind, or sort of, <laughs> sorry, in front of that tree. Take a little bit of white, mark the edge of the roof, pull it down. Very simply, we've got a little snow covered roof back there. If you can get it to go all the way down, it's better, of course. Okay, we'll take a little bit of brown since we haven't touched our brown yet. Mix that in a little bit with our dark color over here, just so it's a dark color. That's all we need. Drop it onto the side, pull it down. Remember, you gotta give it enough room to be able to pull out. Okay, now we're gonna mix up a little bit of that white with that same color, just lightening it a little bit, a little bit at a time. You don't need it to be super bright. This is a nighttime scene, right? And it come underneath, drop it in. You can tell it's a little bit brighter in color but you do have a shadowy area. All right, come on to this side, drop it down, very soft, very gentle like that. And it doesn't matter if it looks different, that's the coolest part. You get all these little wood grain bits in your cabin. Take a little bit of that white that we put on top of the roof and just on the edge, just like that. Got a cool little thing, cool little thing. And it always adds a little bit of depth if you put a dark 
section underneath it. Pull down a little bit. Now you got a little bit of dark area providing just the smallest amount of shadow underneath the eave of the roof, right? And you can adjust that and pull it down and mix it in and do whatever you need to do in order to make it look correct in your mind anyway. And that's why the knives are shaped like this. They give us this tool. They're like, hey guys, use this when you're trying to make, you know, something that looks like a cabin. That's why it's shaped like that. Okay, a little bit of color underneath, just so when we pull out, we have something to pull with. And we're gonna go over here, start up in the corner, work your way down to a point, and then go back, so it's like a V shape. All right, work our way down. Now from this side, we're gonna work our way back. And now all of a sudden, there's the lines, are lined up like that, and it looks sort of 3D. Hanging out here in the front. Very simply and easily done. I like the idea of having water back here. I really do. So before we get too far away, let's see if we can't sneak in. Maybe there's a line. It goes off in the distance, right? Real far out there. And if we're if we're cool enough, it's probably too much. But if we touch just lightly enough, maybe able to get the the effect of having a reflection back there on the water's edge, right? And that'll be our water line for way back behind the house. We should have done it before, but what can you do? What can you do? Really stretch it all the way across, right? Drag that sucker. We can always fill whatever back in with our dark color, right? And that way our water line can come back. And we don't want to cover all the color that's underneath either. So, don't overdo, right? Let's take a little bit of that snow from our brush, pop it down to the edge, wherever you think your edge of your water line is. And the only reason I'm using this fan brush is so it puts out a small amount of paint, right? And then we can, we can flatten it. Flatten it out, make it soft, look at that. And it'll leave all these little cool things, little details in our snow. The harder you push, the more it's gonna flatten out and look like snow. Then we pull to this side over here. Very much flat though. You don't have to, you don't wanna make them too different, right? If they come up and too differently, it's not gonna work out as well. Okay, we're gonna go back to that dark color, grab it up a little bit, and now that we know where our land line is, we're gonna sneak a bit of dark right underneath it. It almost makes it look like it's sitting up straight sitting up out of the water and you got this dark disconnect between any color that's out there okay now we can throw this brush in the garbage because i do not like it at all i'm not really going to throw it in the garbage but i'm not going to use it anymore that's for sure okay now it seems like we need another little bit of land that come out here we need to fix our water line add in our bit of water and i really like that that's a really cool little painting okay come over on the side Scrape out just a little area. All of a sudden you got yourself a cool little door. A lot of times you don't even have to do more than that. It's literally simply and easily done. It's an old little thing, right? If you wanted to add a little chimney, come with the small side of the knife. You have to have an area of light behind your dark chimney. Otherwise it's not gonna make any sense. See if you can get the littlest, smallest bit on top. Poof, that guy's not home. He hasn't been home for a long time. This place is abandoned, man. It's abandoned. No smoke coming out of here, but if you did come upon this place in the middle of nowhere, you could always go, you know. I don't think they'd be mad if you used it. Very cool, all right. Now, it feels like it needs something out here, maybe in the front. We do like an old birch tree. I know someone's clamoring for an old birch tree. They always are. Let's see, maybe we take it from, uh, if I wanna do something big over there, maybe we just do a small one right here. All right, the more we get down, the more we're pushing, so it extends the trunk, it's fatter at the bottom. Now we'll take our paint thinner, right into our little dark mixture, right? Make it really liquidy. And then we can come in here and add little branches. They're really gonna pop against the light color off in the background. 
But if you get into an area where it's very dark up here, you're not really gonna be able to tell where your branches are. So keep that in mind. You can always go back in and, and highlight them and, and make them stand out more, but the more and more layers of paint that you put onto your, your canvas, the harder and harder it's gonna be. I'll tell you that right now. Pull off a little bit in each direction, just gives us a little bit of color to grab. And the more and more we push it back, the higher and higher it gets back there, the further it gets. So you can't go too far, otherwise it's gonna look like it's coming up out of the water, right? You gotta have a little bit of land underneath it. Very cool little painting. See if we can get a little bit of that liquid white color onto our brush and just maybe add it onto the top of the branches or maybe coming down the branches, over here on the branches, just a little bit, a little bit of difference in color, right? Oh, it's just like that. So it shows a little bit of light and we can take that, twist it, turn it, get a little bit of light on one side of our tree and uh, have our dark side as well. Very cool, very cool. Always take it and pull it out at the bottom. You never know what you did or what you messed up. So make it nice and flat on the bottom. Come over here, grab up a little bit of our white, maybe a little bit of our liquid white, make it nice and slippery. And then we can come around and just underneath that dark line, a little bit of water, right? Just crashing softly against the shore. Softly, just like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect across the whole thing either. That's the cool part, right? We take that, before we even do anything, we're gonna pull it down. It's gonna give it that kind of snowy, reflective, reflective color, reflective look onto the water, right by the edge. All right, let's see, a little bit more of that liquid white. Straight up old liquid white. Right. Dropping it in different places so we get a little bit different, brighter areas over here. Maybe not so much in front of the cabin. Maybe it goes off there. We get a cool little thing that happens out over here. We're gonna see what it looks like, that's for sure. Pulling it down, you know how bright it gets. Ooh, immediately gets bright. See that? And you just decide, the more and more you pull, and the more swipes you make, the softer, and everything will kind of sort of turn into its own same color, which isn't really what we want. You just wanna have a little bit of color down there. Just a little, a little bit. It's almost like we could do a bridge back there or something. Bridge over troubled water. It's very cool. You can't really tell where the snow starts, where the water begins. Very neat, very cool little thing. All right, we do every so often though, need a little bit of our water line kind of wrapping around. It is a river, right? Maybe this side we make these little ripples. Never know. See what they look like. And again, we could always take them and blend them out so it doesn't have to be the same thing over and over again. I just never like it to be all one color or all just solid. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I don't like the way that looks. Literally blend it until it goes away. Change it into that dark blue color again. Right? Just like that. Poof. Gone. <laughs> Very cool. All right, let's come in with another thing. We'll throw a big old giant tree in here. We've got this other paint we could use, this black and crimson and blue. Mix it all up and throw in the phthalo green too, just because we have so much paint. I always put way too much phthalo green on the uh, palette. I do it every time. And I don't know how I haven't gone through that color because I always overuse it. <laughs> I'm not sure why I still have so much of it. Okay, now let's come in, we can take I don't want to use that really. Let's stop being lazy and just wash the brushes, Josh. Just wash the brush, get it over with. All right, now we're gonna have this big old honking giant thing coming out of the side over here. So let's cover up both sides. With that big old brush, right? We'll have this huge thing coming. We've got to kind of stay in the lighter parts. We don't want to go too much over the tip top of the mountain. And, and you could stop your painting right now and call it done if you wanted to. You don't have to continue. I'm just showing you what else you could do. Okay, and we could put a big old tree that lives down in these bushes that are happening over here. All these bushes, look, just by pushing up, now we've sealed off the bottom of the painting with some foliage or some sort of something. 
right? Just by pushing up in different angles, turning it, messing it up, leaving little spots where it's even open like that. That looks really cool. Right? Having cool little things come up against all that color back there. And we have to make it up high enough that it makes sense for the perspective of the painting. Now it looks pretty neat. We can have a big old giant something coming out of there. All right, so we'll mix up more of that paint, throw it up here onto the brush, really nice and thick and nasty. And then we'll come in from up here. And then again, the further we push, the further we come down, the harder we're pushing. See how the trunk is expanding? All right, look at that. Down into the bottom. And that brings that tree from above the mountain all the way down down in here and it gets very thick down at the bottom at least two brush lengths over here versus you know three quarters of one maybe one here all depends on what you want your tree to look like we can even throw one more branch off the side just like that cool little thing all right, we don't want to make the branches too big because they're going to be harder to sort of do with a fan brush, right? If you, you use your, your micro liner brush or your script liner, it's gonna be much easier to work with. That's why I only went off just a little bit, especially going up into all that thick stuff. Don't wanna get too crazy. I wanna get too nuts with it. So we need a bigger, here we go. Let's go into here, into our liner, get some little paint thinner onto our pile of paint, make it all thick and all gross and runny and nasty. It takes it from thick to runny and nasty, love it. Over here. And there's a branch that branches off, comes straight out, but we don't want to do too much, right? Take some of that, help it. We don't want to do too much across the tip of that mountain. It's really going to become more difficult because of all that thick snow that we have back there. So over here, maybe we'll come out from underneath that guy and he's got his own little branch that goes off. Come over here. Again, these ones I want to use a smaller brush for, so I'm not going to really mess around with that. Just like that, maybe this guy will take and pull our favorite little branch out. Can't even really see that one. There we go, up top. <laughs> okay, get all the thick paint off of this brush so we can put it away. I'm not gonna need that anymore while we switch to a much smaller, much more fine brush. Okay, now we're gonna be slower going, but we'll be able to make much more tiny little sharp points to our little branches and stuff with this little, little teeny tiny brush, right? It's all you need. Don't need anything fancy. Just a little teeny tiny brush. And you stick your branches in the right spot and they'll look really cool. And maybe this guy comes out this way. Just very straight across the, the tree. Over here, we're popping out into that little bit of color, right? We're not gonna be able to see it if we go out too far into the blackness, into that black zone. So we're staying into that color that we made with our clouds. That's why we initially put it back there. So we didn't have to do a whole lot. We just pull them straight out. Leave a little bit of dark shadow underneath. All right, you can add a little bit of that thick black. And just kind of layer it on there, right? Because all it is is a shadow to our, our little stick. And if we end up covering it, we end up covering it. It's no big deal. But now we have a cool little bit. You can even take one, do a little branch like he's growing out the side over here. Maybe he's got a little friend that lives down there, connects back to the tree. All of a sudden we got this cool little branchy tree all out here, all on his own. Poor little guy. Lives across from the guy who lives in his cabin. He's nice and warm and this tree just freezes to nothing out here. All right, let's take a little bit of that kind of same color and on the edge of our tree, maybe on this side, start around the bottom and just leave very light little swipes with these downward angles, different little things. Doesn't have to look the same, right? Just like that, just pulling slightly. Whatever gets stuck on there, gets stuck on there. Then we have half of it that isn't stuck on there. And that's our soft, dark, shadowy bit, right? Some areas super bright, some areas maybe not so bright. Come over here again. I'm just making little, very light little strokes. Right, even up here at the top, just touching. That's it. All I did was just tap it. Just to get any little paint off. Right, maybe on this guy, he's got a little bit on his tree trunk arm. And we can be very gentle and come out and decide where that tree wants to live. What part? How far does it go into the mountain? Right, it's a very thick branch with no other little small branches on it. Because that sounds good to me. 
this guy over here. Very thick branch, just a couple little bits that come off the edge. We don't want to touch those two light areas together either from either branch. There's got to be a bit of darkness, a little bit of disconnect in between. And if you don't get every single one, then people come on and they go, how come you didn't highlight that branch? And I go, well, to be honest, I just didn't see it. And if I don't see it, I'm sorry. All right, boom. A little bit of our branch sticking off the bottom of that broken piece of wood. Some sort of something happening on that guy right there. It's always my favorite. This is the guy you walk by and stab yourself in the middle of the forest. And it makes it look like it's coming out towards us, which is really neat. Okay, we're gonna clean off all the dark on that. We got a few more little things to do up top. But I need a, a clean brush. So let's see. Come back in with those little things. Maybe we can just highlight the smallest little branches up on top. Don't have to get every one. Right, just a couple little things, kind of showing you where the wood's growing how it's making it, what kind of shape the branches are. And if you can do it with your knife, good on you. Uh, or you can do it with a brush. It takes a little bit longer time and the knife's a little bit easier and faster for old Josh, but I understand not everybody can do it with the knife. So if you need to do it with the liner brush, you can definitely do that. This guy out here, just the top bit of branch. That's all we're really gonna see. And that's a cool looking little tree right there, guys even take little things like little branches that we'll eventually call sticks just by scraping up right we normally scrape those out with our with our brush or with our knife when we're done at the end but we have a black canvas there's nothing to scrape out underneath so we have to kind of add our own okay now we're gonna come in here just again very lightly not covering all those areas rotating the brush so it flips out in different ways and you get this cool little bit and it grows underneath, very dark back there. Whatever's happening off the edge, right? This cool little thing. Very simply and easily done. A couple little missteps, little little weird things that pop out the side and they're coming out the top and it just makes it look so much cooler. To me anyway. Bam, bam, bam. Now we can take those guys if you wanted to, like at the bottom, you can pull those guys out and have them be like a little bit of land underneath. All right, the more we pull to the side, the more the land grows. So we want to be very straight when we do it. Look at that. That's a beautiful little thing. And you can make your tree as thick as you want. I, I would love to have it go that thick all the way to the top, but with all that texture of the mountain, it would be a lot more difficult to build up your, your um, branches against all that big thickness. Right? Pop a little bit of shadowy grass back in here just by hitting the, the canvas, right? Whatever gets stuck, gets stuck. Just little things. And on this side, it goes off this way, over to the left. And we leave little things and little areas, and all of a sudden it looks so much different just from those little things than it did before. You can take some of them, swipe them up, make it tall grass. Swipe them to the side, make them little shadows. Do a little mixture of both and have it look like Josh's, right? You never know. Never, never know. We could put another little tree over here. We could do a lot of things. And we do have a lot of paint left. So let's do another little tree. All right, we'll do one in between these guys. Maybe up here to down there. Pop them down, right? Two little matching trees. Just like that. Now we gotta come in, get that paint thinner back onto our brush. And that same darker color and add cool little branches across our lighter areas. All right, the more little branches and stuff that we add in there, the cooler it's gonna look. You just don't wanna make them too big and you don't wanna fight across too much thick paint. That's what I always say. All right, they don't have to look like the other ones. You don't have to go against all of this stuff because it becomes more difficult when you do to keep them separated, right? It's hard to see that branch. There we go, a couple little ones. Oh, I love that, poking out towards the cabin. This guy's poking out over here. And then we can take the bottom and swipe it. Just like that, puts them back there. Kind of cool, kind of cool little thing. Okay, let's take our liquid white, go back into that color. Very little amount of it on the brush though. Don't want a whole lot, because it's gonna be 
hard to kind of just get the edges of our tree or the edges of our branches when we have too much paint on there. All right, so we're gonna cover down, go back, get some more, make our little lines, come down. And that'll be our the bark on the tree, just like that. Take our little bit off the top. Gotta stay on the top, gotta leave some of that dark bit below there. You can't cover the shadow. It's not like a tracing line. It's like a line that says, hey, go above me a little and leave some of my darkness underneath. And that way I'll stand out. This guy over here, a little bit off the edge. Just like that. And that is how you do that, folks. That looks really good. All right, let's throw the family in there. Same sort of phthalo green and liquid white, just so we get it nice and mixed up and nice and liquidy. And then we'll go in and we'll paint Bailey and Mommy and Daddy, right? What do we do us up here? I put us into every painting because it's really the only way that we get to travel. And uh, people seem to love it, that the family goes into every painting. So, London, my wife, myself, and my daughter Bailey go into every single one. So if you've ever bought one, it most definitely, except for just a few, have those three birds in it. Now we'll sign the bottom down here. We use liquid white, sign it right over here so you guys have to look at the signature all the time, not try to hide it. Right there. Poof, looks good. We can make the K normal size. There we go. All right. Well, I wanna thank you for watching and tuning in and I really hope you try this one. Uh, it's real fun, real fantastic with just a few, just a handful of colors. So can't wait to see your version. And until then, you guys take care, have the rest of a good day and pow!